Hi everybody and welcome to my new series. Uh, this is going to follow the story of Kazarg, uh, a young orc. And this series is going to be recorded using my Legacy of the Dragonborn Plus mod setup. Uh, I am starting off the series using the mod setup exactly as per the guide. I will put the link in the description below for the guide. Um, uh, the guide that I followed was current as of um, April. It has changed obviously since then, continues to change over time. So, um, you know, this isn't going to be consistent with the exactly what the current setup is. But even so, I think it will give a good flavor for what this, uh, this guide is all about. Uh, as we go through, I am planning to make a few tweaks. Um, probably mostly textures and simple things. Uh, some tweaks as we go along, but I will highlight those as we go through uh, the series. But for now, we're starting off with straight guide uh, with no alterations. Which is why I'm going to uh, do this series a little bit differently. Rather than do this as a role play, I uh, think I've finally settled on um, on doing it as a bit more of a sh not a showcase, I don't really want to use that word, but just an example of what the game looks like with this mod setup. So I think there will probably be a lot of out of character talking, and uh, I don't think I'm going to be able to role play um, very well with that kind of going on in the background. Plus, I think one of the most interesting things about this story um, or this series might be all of the mods. Because there's a lot of mods in this setup, and I think uh, people may be curious to actually see all of the changes from the original game. So I think that will best, best be done um, by doing this as not a strict roleplay, and more of just a, I guess, a, a let's play or play through where I don't stay in character, um, and, and I just, you know, talk about what happens. Uh, so we'll see how that goes. Uh, I'm not very good at off-the-cuff uh, talking, particularly while I'm playing. Um, we're going to give this a try, so, you know, bear with me. Um, I'm still an amateur at this, still learning, uh, but hopefully this will be, there will be something interesting and fun in this. And if nothing else, you can turn the sound down and you can look at the beautiful game because I tell you, the textures in this game are truly incredible uh, and it makes the world just bright and beautiful uh, and amazing. So if nothing else, hopefully you can enjoy it for that. Okay, in this very first video, I'm going to do one cheesy bit of role-playing, and that is I'm going to read uh, Kazarg's uh, intro story, and I'm going to do it in um, my best attempt at an orc voice, which is not very good, but um, uh, still, I'm, I'm going to I'm going to do that anyway, just because it's uh, it's fun for me. <laughs> so um, I'll put it. I'll try to put it in the transcript, maybe. So again, if you want to turn the sound down, but you want to read her background story, you can. Uh, right, so the rest of this video is going to be that. Just to get started on her story, you can see where she's from, uh, a little bit of background about her, uh, and then I will just end this video uh, on that note uh, when we get to the end of that intro. And then you'll hear from me, um, Mom, <laughs> again uh, in the next video when we start off playing the game uh, for real. So I uh, hope you enjoy this intro story and um, I will see you in the next video. And with that, I'll introduce Kazarg, who is here to tell us her story. Dushnik Yal, my new home, my new nightmare. It has been three weeks since I was sent here. Three weeks since they married me off to the chief. It was clear from the first night that he didn't want me. Neither did anyone in my birth stronghold. Once Mother died, nobody knew what to do with me. I think they just wanted me gone, for I was a nuisance. Under pretense of strengthening the bonds between strongholds, I was sent as a bride prize to Dushnik Yal. Chief Burgak is a stern and cruel man. This For most orcs, that is considered a good alone. thing. Strong chiefs are needed to protect the clan. I am but for a young, new wife, a complete stranger among the people here, 
It is terrible. My ordeal began on my arrival, the night I was wedded to the chief. Everyone and everything here was strange to me, and I was afraid. Cowardice is abhorred by my race, and I shamed Burga by resisting him. Instead of being treated with patience, I was beaten and thrown to the ground and forced to endure the consummation. It was much the same for that first week, except that the beatings grew worse. Finally, I was beaten to the point that one of the other orcs intervened. Arab, the hunt wife, came to my aid. Before she was able to stop him, Burguk had scarred my face and broken one of my beautiful tusks. Although I will wear these reminders of Burguk's cruelty for the rest of my life, I will forever be grateful for Arab's kindness. She carried me to her cot, tended my wounds, and nursed me. Thankfully, the chief has not come near me since. Yesterday was the first day I felt strong enough to resume normal daily activities. No sooner did I set foot outside the longhouse than I was set upon by the wise woman, Murbo. She dragged me to the center of the yard, verbally abusing and degrading me the whole time. I was to be made an example. An example of exactly what an orc woman should not be. They stripped me of my armor, tied me naked to a post, and whipped me with a leather strap by turn. The final shame was having my head shaved, being stuffed into a dress, and sent off to the hillside to tend the garden like a small child. I was to stay out of everyone's sight as much as possible, for I was an object of shame for the stronghold. I suppose they couldn't just kill me, since I'd been given to them as a gift, and the other stronghold might not look kindly on having their gift butchered. Today, while sitting on the hillside looking across the mountains, I decided I must leave. Leave or die. My personal honor dictates it. Malakath and these... I refuse to call them kin. These orcs be damned. I cannot live in this stronghold under the tyranny of a new husband and the unfriendly eyes of everyone else. They expect me to become something I am not. To become someone else. But I cannot. If I cannot live with my free will, then I will not live at all. I envy the wildcats that roam the path below the garden. I watch them, and I envy their freedom. With my decision made, I spent the rest of the day trying to act normal while secretly making preparations. I have hidden some supplies in the barrels by the garden. Tonight, I will leave while the stronghold sleeps. Fortunately, I have decent hunting skills and should be able to creep out undetected. Those same skills should allow me to survive in the wilds on my own. I have not yet decided where to go. I only know that I must get away. Anywhere is better than here. In conversation with Arab the Hunt Wife, I managed to find out the location of all the other orc strongholds in Skyrim. Not because I wanted to visit. No, just the opposite. Knowing their locations meant it would be easier Marvel for me to avoid them. Poisons and cures if you need them. She also mentioned that the Forge Wife, Garol, would be willing to sell me some armor or a weapon. I had managed to keep hold of some coin, and there were still some things I needed. You should see Garl if you're looking for a blade or armor. It was good to know that Arab and Garl would speak to me. I decided to visit the forge and see what supplies I could buy. While there, Garl told me about her daughter who had left the stronghold. You bring me ore, I'll give you coin. It was a point of shame and grief to her and I hoped that her telling me did not mean she suspected my plans. 
Regardless, she showed me a sword she had crafted for her daughter, Lash, who was now living in a human village called Carthwaston. It is said that an orc first learns to wield a hammer in her mother's womb. By tradition, a mother always teaches her children how to smith. If a chief has a second wife, she is called the Forge Wife in honor of this. I decided that would be my first stop after I left. I would take the sword there, both to honor Garol and to meet her daughter, who was making a life outside of a stronghold. Occasionally. But an orc blade is a very personal thing. Anger, regret, pride. All these things are put into our steel. When my daughter Lash chose to leave the stronghold, I forged a sword to channel all my shame and grief. Honor me with a task, Outlander. Bring the sword to my daughter if you see her. It'll be all she needs to know. Thank you. Hmm. Blades, helmets, pretty much anything to suit your needs. I only had enough gold to buy some crafting supplies. All the weapons and armor were too expensive. But warm gear for travel was just as important, so I spent some time crafting at the tanning rack. When I ran out of leather, I headed back up the hill to see what else I could get from Garol. Are you looking to work? The mines are nearby. You bring me ore, I'll give you coin. Seeing that I didn't have much gold, Until the smith said time. that she would pay me for mining up some ore. So I spent the rest of the afternoon doing that. It was dirty and difficult work, but it paid off in more than one way. I managed to find some useful supplies within the mine, and I stuffed as much into the pockets of my dress as I could without raising suspicion. I earned a decent amount of gold from the ore I'd mined, and was able to get what I needed from Geralt to craft the last few things for my journey. Are you looking to work? The mines are nearby. You bring me ore, I'll give you coin. I'll buy everything you've dug up. Take a look. Malakath protect you. Luckily, being an object of shame, nobody paid me any attention as I worked at the rack. When dark began to fall, I headed to the longhouse as was my normal routine. I sat in my usual spot by the fire, staring into the embers and dreaming of my freedom, while the rest of the stronghold dined in company with each other at the table. I waited, alone and ignored, in my corner, 
until everyone was abed. When the coast was clear, I first picked the lock on the cellar door to see what I could find down there. It was a treasure trove of alchemy ingredients. I had never been allowed down there before, and I took everything I could find. I had watched the wise women crafting their potions enough times to understand the basics, and I was certain I could make something useful myself. Back upstairs, I quietly crept around, taking the last few things I thought might be helpful. Whatever gold I could find, some lock picks, and, perhaps not a wise idea, a full set of armor from the chief's room. When I left the longhouse, the yard was pitch black, even with the fire still burning. I could barely see to gather some final things from the alchemy lab and the barrels and sacks stored outside. Then I made my way to the hillside and gathered the rest of the supplies I had stashed in the barrel by the garden. I donned the rest of my gear and was ready to go. It was time to make a new start. Leave behind this stifling stronghold and spread my wings. I already felt free, and for the first time in as long as I could remember, I felt confident, brave, and bold. My future awaited, and I was more than eager to meet it. <laughs>